So because tonight is also uh, Lag Boimer, so we're going to see the connection between Lag Boimer and the Man. So we'll start like this. When did the Man start falling? So the Pashtas, it either started on Tezvav or Tezayin. So that's where the Machlech is for Shainim, and it's brought down on the Parsha, and there's a Rashi also in Kiddushin. When the Rashi talks about, the Gemara talks about when they ended their Yisrael, about th- that they had 40 years of the man. Mm-hmm. And then the Gemara says, mm-hmm. It's not 40 years, it's, it's, it was 30 days less. That the Ugois, the matzah that they took out of Mitzrayim, that tasted like man. So then Rashi said, and, this is, and therefore, if you do the Cheshbon, it started on the 16th. This is what Rashi is. But there's a Chassam Soifer that the Chassam Soifer says, Soifer writes, that um, in Child's Chulas, in Yeridea, Simon Reish Lamad Beis, Chassam Soifer writes that the man started on Chai Ir, which is tonight, like a which is a big tzar Tzarachim, from where the Chassam Sefer got it. But it's more Tzarachim, really the bigger Tzarachim, is what compelled the Chassam Sefer to say that was Chayir, that was Lagba Now there's a truth of the Chassam Sefer that he's, he has a hard time. The Chassam Sefer had a hard time with some of the practices that were done on Lagba For example, burning of clothes. This is a common practice. People used to make bonfires and burn their clothes, especially in Miron. And uh, there's a whole issue about uh, baltashkes. If you're allowed to waste your clothes, but what what is it that the man is connected with? Now, if you look in the Gemara where it talks about lechem mishnah, so the Gemara says in Shabbos Af Kufid Zayin Ahmed Beis. That on Shabbos, Chayv Adam Yitzoy Al Shtei Kli Kli Sixi Lachem Mishnah. Shabbos, a person has to wash and make a bracha. Rashi says Yitzoy means Birchas Hamoitzi. A person is making Birchas Hamoitzi on Lachem Mishnah. You, you need two breads. That's the mucker that we have to have on Shabbos. If there's a mucker that it's Minatoya, uh, the Taz says Minatoya, so does the Zoyer. Or Midarabanan, but you, just, you definitely have to have Lechem Mishnah, which is connected to the Man. What you talked about also yesterday, it was also connected with Yamtif, according to the Taisvis, that this is Midrash Chalukim. If also on Yamtif there is the Man didn't fall, which is the Shitta of the Mechilta, and if the Man didn't fall, therefore we also have Lechem Mishnah. That's, a, that's the Psach La Lacha. Now, the, the Arizal in Shar Kavanas writes, that um, before this, the idea of lechem mishnah is because it's connected to the man. So when did the lechem mishnah f- fall, or when did when did they receive the lechem mishnah? They received the double portion, which is what day? Which is really on Friday, right? And then Friday they ate one mana, one oimer for Friday, and the Shabbos day there was left another oimer for Shabbos. Right. So when was when was there two lechems? When was there two mana of oimer? Shabbos or Friday? Friday. So why do we make a zecher leman on Shabbos when on Shabbos there's only one man? If anything, we should make a zecher for man on Friday. So on the Friday afternoon, we should all make two pieces of bread for lechem mishnah, and that's symbolic of, of the zecher leman. Why do we do it on Shabbos? This is all klotz kasha, obviously. It's a very simple shiloh. But we have to understand why Taka, 
what it is about this. In the Arizal, we'll see that it's also brought in Lalacha. The Arizal writes that the custom of the Ari was to, to do Lacham Mishnah, not with two breads, but with 12 breads. How do you do 12 chalas? So he said, because of Lacham upon him. Because of Lacham upon him is 12 chalas. So therefore, he, the Arizal used to make Hamoitzi on 12 chalas. This minig of 12 chalas, incidentally, even though it's a minimum of the Kabbalah, the minig of Ari, is actually a common practice. People don't even recognize that they're doing this. But the fact that chalas is braided, certainly Ashkenazi chalas is braided, there's two things. First of all, many times they're braided with six braids. So each chala has tw- six, and together it's 12. And then there's also, in you see, the, the Arizal in, the, in Azam Meshvach, he, talk, he talks about the vovim to scatter, that it's a vov, that the letter... The chala actually looks like the letter vav, and you're doing a yichud, a yutke vavke, but the two vavs is six and six, which is twelve also. Also, the hands are each one five, so it's the hay and the hay and the vav. You cut the piece of chala and a small piece of chala, you have yutke vavke. Okay, this is the toyas ari. So you're also doing the idea of amiyach yichudim. It's interesting that this gemara in Shabbos of chayvon lufzoy al shtei kikros. The Shittas Harajba is that Liftsoya doesn't mean to make a bracha. Rashi writes clearly that it means you should make a bracha samoitzi. But the Rajba says that it means that you have to have two chala and you have to cut both chalas. That's the Shittas Harajba. Shulchan Aruch rules like Rashi. The Gura rules Lahalacha according to the Rajba. Now, according to this, you also have 12 chala. Because if every single meal you have two chalas, if you do also lach mishnah by sudish lishes, right? So then if you split the chal in half, you take your chalas, but you're splitting in half because if you would say have all things, you also have end up twelve chalas. I got another klotz kasha. What does lechem upon him have to do? It's chala chala gzeir because it's chala, so you need chala. And the frat that the Gemara says the only reason why you do two chala. Forget about 12 chalas. 12 is an exaggeration. The reason why you do two chalas is to do with the man. So what, is the man, what does the man have to do with the lechem upon him? So, how did that result tie this in? And obviously, there's some type of deeper kavan and tying these two things together. Okay. Another simple shaila about this is about the connection between the man and this is that lechaura. The man and lechem upon our mamish hafachin, the two opposite things. The man was b'chol yom new. Every day was a new piece of bread. Not Shabbos, but every day was a new thing. In fact, if he kept it over, it got stale and it, it got ruined. By lechem upon him, there was a Rashi that we learned in Parshas Emmer a few weeks ago, or last week. Rashi says that Hoitza Mekalel, the person that cursed, so what was this Mekalel? The Medrash says that what was, he was Yatsum in Oilomai. What was he Yatsum? What did he do? He said that it's not their Heretz to give the king old bread. Because Lechem upon him sat the whole week. So he said, what, if a king comes to you, you give him old cold bread or you give him fresh warm bread? So Lechem upon him, theoretically, is old cold bread because it's sitting the whole week. Now, Taka the Gemara does say that Lechem upon him there was a miracle. The Gemara in Yuma says there was something special, miraculous happened that the Lechem always remained fresh. That there was these chachos. But Lechur, in, in, in principle, in, in, con- in concept, the man represents something that has to be mischadish b'chol yoyim. Every single day, something new, and you can't keep it, and Dafka can't keep it on for the next day. And the Lechem upon him is Dafka something that is old. You don't, cut, you don't bake it every day. True that it becomes fresh every day, but the concept is, seems to be the opposite. So we're going to try to understand this a little bit by first going into the whole concept of Sphira. Sphira like Boimer. So we'll start with Sphira. What's the Makar of Sphira? The Makar of Sphira, which is the Dinah Shulchan Aruch that you know, people don't marry, a certain period of time during the sphere, and you don't take haircuts, 
playing music is a little more lenient. It doesn't say clearly on Shulchan Aruch. But this idea, where's the mucker that sphere is a time of mourning? So everyone says, the real answer to this question is, everyone says, it's a Gemara in Yavamas, which talks about the Tamidah Rabbi Kiva. But if you look at the Gemara in Yavamas, all the Gemara says is like this. We learned, we learned this that God in Zera, where it says you should have all these children when you get older. But the Gemara says that Rabbi Kiva had, had 12,000 Zugim of Talmudim. He had 24,000 students in Rabbi Kiva. The Kula Mesa of Perik Hechon, Nation Nago Kavit Zelaza. They all died during this period of time. And the Gemara says, What's that time? The Pesach of Adat Zeres, or Preisat Zeres. And the world was Shamem. Torah Rabbi Kiva came to the south and taught and they established a Torah. This is the whole Gemara. Then the Gemara says, how did they die? They died Misera, which is Asker. Asker is a form of uh, croup or some type of death connected with the uh, ventilation. But the Gemara doesn't have an oisphere. The Gemara doesn't say, and therefore... Because they died, therefore what? Therefore we mourn. It doesn't say that. So if you look in the Rishonim, like in the Rambam, Rambam doesn't mention the idea of sphere, then it's the time of mourning. So the, the question is two things. First of all, what's the idea of sphere? Why is it a time of mourning? And also, what is the idea of Lagbaimer? What's Lagbaimer? Because you know, like when we're in the middle of sphere, there's a time that we celebrate. Why do we celebrate? So again, let's let's try to see what it says in Shulchan Aruch. In Shulchan Aruch, which is from the from the tour in the Beis Yosef, the tour brings down that Noigim Shalei Lisa Isha Ben Pesach Latzer is a lag boimer. Why? Mesha Oisa is Ma Mesa Tamidir Rekiva. So the Shulchan Aruch, the tour already writes that writes that the reason that we don't get married. Until Lag Boimer is because the students of Rabbi Kiva died, passed away. So this is a Chiddush again. The Gemara doesn't say that. But the earlier Shainim and the Torah say that this is a reason because the Mesa Tamid Rabbi Akiva. So then what's Lag Boimer? Miyum, Lag Boimer, Ve'elech, Akol Shari. But I'm not even sure they stop at Lag Boimer. She'oz Pasku Malamas. So according to the Beis Yosef, According to the to the Mechaber. basically it's like this: they they passed away for thirty three days. The source of this comes from the Goinim. The Goinim is there's a a Masur b'shem a Goinim, which is brought down in the Meiri, that they only died for thirty three days. So the BC also said, okay, if they only died in thirty three days, so it's like you divide it three times. It's 49 days. So the 33rd day is a, third, is a, is a, is a second third. Right? Then you get into the third third. Apoyz HaTzer is the third. They didn't die. So it comes along the Beis Yosef and says, okay, like this. What you do is you set you mourn for the first 33 days till the end of Lag Boimer. And then from Lad, from the 40, 34th day of Boimer, since they stopped, pa- they d- stopped dying, that's the Messiah from the Goyen, they stopped dying, therefore... From this day forward, you can get married. So there's nothing really inherent in Lag Boimer. In fact, the only day that's inherent is actually, if it's inherent, is in the 34th day of Boimer, according to the Messiah. Mm-hmm. But the reason why we celebrate is because it's, we're stopping to mourn. Nothing to do with, Rabbi, with Rashbi, just because it's a time that the mourning stops. So it's not a time of celebration, but it's a time that re- re- resuming marriage and, and, uh, and haircuts. This is the opinion of the Messiah. The Ramah, the Shittas Ramah, is that they also passed away for 33 days. But the Cheshman is different. It starts from Rosh Chodesh, year, and it goes till three days before Shavuos. That's the 33 days. And something mysteriously happened. Pasku Malamois, doesn't mean they ceased dying, but they did not die on the 33rd day. And then resumed dying on the 34th day. So from Rosh Chodesh year till a few days before Shavuos they died. And one day they stopped dying. This is the opinion of the Ramah. 
And that's why we celebrate Lag Boimer, because it's Paschim Alamus. Correct, till three days before Shuas, but they only started dying, according to Ramah, on the Rosh Chodesh year. That's the 33 days. So the argument to Beis of and Ramah, which is the early argument, is which 33 days do you count? Right? Do you count from Pesach till the 33rd day, or the 34th day, or do you start from Rosh Chodesh till... That's why people, some people, Ashkenazim, get married till Rosh Chodesh year. That's a general custom. I love many Ashkenazim Jews. And many Sephardic Jews get married after Lag Boimer. You can't have it both ways. You can't be Ashkenazic and Aspartic and get married. But and some people machmer the whole thing, the whole forty-nine days. The shita of the Maharil, the Maharil has a third shita, which is that really, when it says that they die for thirty-three days, it doesn't mean from day one to day to a certain date, like from Ashkodesh till three days before Shavuos, or from until Lag Boimber. But it means, in generally, they die within the whole. 49 days they passed away for 33 days because you're eliminating the seven Shabbos and, and the two days of Shkodesh, etc. So you have 33 days, and therefore, symbolically, Lag Boimer becomes a symbolic day of the seizing of dying, even though Lag Boimer actually they die according to the Mariel. This is Shittah Samariel, this is the three opinions, but we have nothing of other things that happen on Lag Boimer. Now, the Gemara does say that the Shamim, the world was desolate. And until, until Rabbi Akiva went to Durham and taught these five Talmidim. One of the five Talmidim is Rabbi Shimon. Most people, if you ask them what happened like Moimer, they'll say something to do with the Rashbi. Where's the marker for this? Where's the source for this? And usually people say that what it means that uh, like Moimer is something to do with the Rashbi, it's, it's the day that Rashbi passed away. And they'll say, it says in, and it says Darizal writes this. The thing with Darizal is, Darizal definitely celebrated Lag Boimer. Darizal said that Rav Chaim Vital writes that Darizal used to go to the to, to Miron, and he used to celebrate, and he used to cut, he cut his hair, the child's hair. He gave a haircut, an option to his child, and they didn't say Nachem, and it was definitely a day of celebration. But the language in the, in the Kisvah Darizal is Yoim Simchas Rashbi. Simchas Rashbi, and the corrupt version of the Kisvah Rizal was Yom Shemes Rashbi. The Ches was eliminated, and instead of, instead of saying Simchas Rashbi, it became Shemes Rashbi. This is the Chidah writes. This is not a critical edition of, uh, of Kisvah Rizal. The, the Chidah writes that uh, in the Kisvah Rizal it doesn't say Yom Shemes Rashbi, it's Yom Simchas Rashbi, and later versions say Yom Shemes Rashbi. The way it became associated with Yom Shemes Rashbi, which is the day of the Petir of Rashbi, is really the Mishnah Chassidim and the Chemnus Hayom. Chemnus Hayom is a controversial text, but the Mishnah Chassidim was more accepted by Manu Chai Kriyaki. He writes as Yom Shemes, but that this day there, that Rashbi passed away. And that's when we came to the Skabal with Tfutsis Yisrael that the Lag Ba'imer is the day that we celebrate the passing of the Rashbi. So you see, that it's a chiddush. In other words, it was not known by the. It was not known in the times of the Gemara. It was not known in the time of the Rishonim. And somehow, in the 1700s, it became revealed that this is the day the Rashbi passed passed away. You'll see that the Chassam Soifer says this is the day that the month started falling. The Mishnah Siddim says that this is what he has the tradition. This is the day that the Rashbi passed away. And the Bnei Soscher comes along and says because Hakadosh Baruch Hu is a Malish Hashem Shal Shadikim. That a person, a tzaddik, passes away the same day he was born, so it's the day Rashbi was born. So, not only is it the day of his death, but the day that he was born. The Aruch HaShulchan, which is not known as a great mystic and doesn't usually say things, HaKodesh, but the Aruch HaShulchan, which is a book in Allah, the Aruch HaShulchan writes that Lag Boimer was the day that Rashbi left the cave. So, my question is first of all, Whenever there's a lot of different reasons for one thing, we have to be a little specific. This is suspicious over here. If one thing has so many different reasons, so what's the reason? And also, how is it that this is, I think, the only one yamtif or one day of celebration that actually no one knows what we're doing? No one knows why we're celebrating. And until very recently, let's say if I lived before the Bnei Yisachar's time, I wouldn't know that he was born this day. If I lived before the Aruch HaShulchan, I wouldn't know he left the cave. And I lived before the Mishnah Siddim, I wouldn't know that he passed away. Why is it such a yomtiv that's 
or such a day, I want to say Yom Tov, but it's such a marked day in the calendar that's shrouded in mystery and uh, with a lot of uncertainties. Huh? Yeah, Daf Lam and Gimel and Shabbos. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, what is this about the times of Sphere? What is it about Lag Boimer? And what is it about Sphere? Now, we're going to see that the same thing that we talk, that we say about Lag Boimer is Mamish the same thing about Sphere. Because, again, the Gemara doesn't say, the Gemara doesn't say what the reason for Sphere is. The Shibali Alaket, which is from the school of Rashi, or the Hamidia Rashi, the Shibali Alaket says that the days between Pesach and Shavuos is um, is a time that the, there's a Mishnah in Idias in Perik Bay is Mishnah Tess. Rabbi Yochan Manuri says that Mishpat Shal Rishayim, the judgment of Rishayim, is between Pesach and Atzeres. The Mishpat of Rishayim is Pesach and Atzeres. It's a time of Din. And uh, so the Shabbat like it says, because it's a time of Din for the Shamas in this period of time, so we also act, we do Avelis. We do avail us in sympathy, in sympathy to neshamas that are needed in this period of time. It's one of the Roshayinim. This is one of the earliest sources to say that this time is a time of din. That we see that in the Mishnah it's considered a time of din. And later the Telas Yaakov and the, the Rameh Ben Gabbai and the Shalah Kaddish bring down another Mishnah the Mishnah Rosh Hashanah says that by Pesach there's Nidun al it's a Din al and by Tzeres is Nidun al Perisa Ilon, on the fruits of the tree. So they say that this actually refers to Neshamas, souls. And not to get into this, but Arizal says that during this period of time, is the time of Gilgal and Neshamas, that souls that entered into other forms of life, like into Paris, into vegetation, that's when there's a Nidun, there's a Din of Nidun Neshamas. That's one thing. So that's why it's may avail us. Also connected to, to the death of, Rebbe, of the students of Rabbi Kiva. The Taz, which is in, on the Shulchan Aruch, the Taz says that if you look at this, you'll see that there's two things. It's actually two things. One is that even if you say that after Lag Boimer didn't pass away, So the Taz says that the reason why we, we commemorate this time as a time of Avelis, a time of mourning, is because of the Crusades, of the First Crusade. Because if you know a little bit of Jewish history, or history in general, during the First Crusade in the 1000s, the Crusades, many Jewish communities in Europe were massacred. The Chassidia Ashkenaz, the Beleza of Gemaiza, saw his wife and his children being killed in front of him. There was a very, very terrible decrees then. And because of that, we say Avarachamim, even on Shabbos, when it's Shabbos of Orchim, because this period of time was Xer, there was a terrible crusades against the Jewish people. So, the Taz writes that that's the reason, one of the reasons why we, it's a time of mourning. So we have Rabbi Yechidim Nuri from the Shibali Aleke that says that it's a Mishpat of Dinim of, of, of Rishayim and Gehenim. It's a time of Din and Gehenim. And then you have a reason that has to do with the Crusades. Rabbi Yaakov Emden in the Siddur, in Siddur Rabbi Yaakov Emden, he says that, based on the Taz, he says there's also another event that happened. Not only the Crusades, but the Chmelensky Revolt, which up until the Holocaust was the worst catastrophe that happened to Jewish people, in the Xeras Tachvatat. He says that also happened in Pesach Latzeres, happened in that period of time. And in commemoration of that 
terrible massacre that happened. In, uh, in 1648, 1649, that terrible massacre, we also are a little bit in mourning. So we don't get married, we don't take haircuts, and we don't play music. The Aruch HaShulchan says that if you look through medieval Jewish history, a lot of the bad things that happened to Jews happened during this period of time. He said taxation usually happened this period of time. Uh, Jews don't like taxes, unfortunately, for whatever reason. But the, and uh, there was other things, other decrees. He says blood libels. When the blood libels always happen around Pesach. So there's a lot of different things that happen during this period of time, and therefore becomes Yemei Avelas. But it's again, it's the same problem we have like Boimer. You have the, the death of the Tumidi of Kiva, the Mishpat Roshahim and Gehenim, the, the Chamelensky revolt and the, the, the First Crusade and, and taxation and blood libels. So what is a Taka? What's Taka? What, what is Sphira? What is the time of Sphira? Now we have to get a little bit more into Oymik to understand what this is. What is really the idea of Sphira? In one of the Rishonim, in Rabbeinu Yeruchim, Rabbeinu Yeruchim writes that it's a time, in the time of the Svira, in time after Pesach, the Shavuos, it's a time you don't take haircuts because you may have din. It's a time of din. In the language of the Arizal, I think this will maybe this will help us understand the whole thing. In the language of the Arizal, the time of Sphira, this time period between Pesach and Shavuos, is a time of Katnas, and Katnas is connected to Din. Katnas is a restriction, smallness. What does this mean? Pesach is Yitzis Mitzrayim. Yitzis Mitzrayim also comes out in the fall, I'm sorry, in the spring, which means that Yitzhiz Mitzrayim is when a person leaves constriction, leaves their limitations. It's like you go through a harsh winter, and all of a sudden, you go to the Mitzrayim. Yitzhiz Mitzrayim, in the language of the Arizal, in the Seder night, a person receives, is gifted godless, gifted greatness, higher potential. They're gifted because it's like, it's like the spring, something that comes instantaneously, not something you can work on. But you're gifted, just like halal avay dezar, halal avay dezar, in the time. There was no reason for the Jewish people to leave Egypt, and they were stuck in Memtesh Sharetuma. And then you see the time is Pasach Hashem al about the others, about the Israel, that Hashem jumps over and means it skips over, that we take from a place that you're stuck into a place that you're liberated. You're gifted. Liberation. Marshal, Lama Davadoyme, if you want to give a marshal for this, is let's say you have a child or a friend of yours that's hanging around uh, not good people and they're being influenced not in a good way. So, Yitzhiz Mitzrayim would mean you take this child and you say, you know, these friends that you have, these are not good friends for you. I'm going to give you a new set of friends. Let's take you out of this, this relationship, let's take you out of these friends. So Yitzhiz Mitzrayim is a freedom from. You're, you're, you're leaving the place of constriction, or the place of limitation, the place that's holding you back, the place that you're stuck, but it's a freedom from something. Matan Torah is a third shlav, is a third state. That's a freedom too. You can be free from a bad relationship, but you have to be free to a better relationship. Let's say, for example, you tell this child, you're not having the right friends, and I'm taking you away from your friends, and here's a new set of friends that you should have, which will make you a better person. So there's a freedom from something to a freedom to, right? Freedom from is you're leaving Mitzrayim, leaving the constriction. Freedom to is that you're assuming a new responsibility, which is Matan Torah. The problem with this whole narrative, which is godless in the language of the Arizal, is godless Rishon Shani, godless Shlishi. I'm not going to get into the details why this is, but it's like greatness of Pesach and greatness of Shavuos. The problem with this two level of godless is that if you don't have cotness in between, 
you'll never achieve real godless. Because if, let's say, for example, if you take a child and you say, these friends are not good for you. I'm going to put you with these friends. So the kid said, okay, fine. I, I think these are actually be better friends for me. And they to hang out with these kids for a few days. But their natural instinct will be to go back to their original friends because that's where they feel much comfortable. How do you get someone to move from to? How do you get that? You have to go through a place where you don't have A and you don't have C. Where you're already no longer there, but not yet here. When you're no longer here, not yet there, that's a state of cotmus constriction, which means you're not yet you're not yet in the place where you want to be, but you desire it. So the cotmus builds desire for the godless. The child says, I actually don't like these old friends, and now I desire to have better friends, and then I'm going to actually have friends. So there's three stages. The first stage is that you leave the constriction, you leave but it's a gifted, it's something that comes from beyond, which is that you're, you're gifted godless. That's Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim. That's Nisan. Sivan is where you're, gift, you're given the godless shlishi, the higher level of godless, which is Ma'am Tara. That not only you, are you leaving the place that you came from, but you're assuming a higher place to be. But in between has to be the building of the desire that you actually desire it, that you yearn for it. That you say, I don't want to be that old me, and I want to be a new me. And I desire for that. So the whole purpose of the katnas is to be in the place of the katnas, not to ignore the place of the katnas, and not to say, I would love to jump into the godless. But you actually have to be in the katnas and work on the desire to get to the godless. Someone came to Rapinkas cards, I think I repeated this a few weeks ago, someone came to Rapinkas cards and told him that he has constipation. And the uh, and Pilchus Karas told him that he should fast. And he said, why? He said, the reason why you had contemplation is all you make that, not for sorry that you ate the anarchal food for you. He says, because there was something in your life that demanded for you to experience and embrace katnas. He said, you, had, you were like, there was an availus in your life. Someone died in your life. You ignored it. So it affected you in katnas. Therefore, you can't release the only way that you're going to get to the godless is if you're going to go through katnas, and fasting is the process of katnas. So you can't skip katnas step if you really want to achieve godless. If you're, seeing, you're, if you're achieving, if you're talking about Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim, so that's godless, that's gifted godless, and then it's, it's, it's temporary. But right after Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim, when you're gifted as godless, you're going to fall into katnas because you're not equipped for that godless. And the whole intention of this process of katnas is to get to godless, but you need to be in the place of desire to get to that godless. You follow? This is the state of the katnas. In another marshal, this is not from the Arizal, but this is what it says in the Lash Nazar. The Zohar says that the seven weeks of Sphira, the seven weeks of Sphira, corresponds to the seven days of Nida. The seven days of separation. That Matan Torah is the time when there's a Yichud between Yisrael and Kuchibrihu. There's going to be an intimacy. Yitzis Mitzrayim is also a form of intimacy. In between these two intimacies, there's a state of period, of separation. There's Tumah, there's Nida. What's the intention of Nida? Why is there, what's the concept of Nida? So the Gemara says, in Nida, Taf Lamed Aleph on the base, Tanya Rameyam Oimer, Mipne Ma Amatoya Nida Lishiva, Mipne Sheragal of the Kotzba, Amar Toya to hate Tuma Shiva Siamik Neshte Chviva Abaila Kishas Kisasa Lechupa. That the intention of Nida is not for separation. The whole intention of the separation is to create the longing for the higher unity when they're finally intimate. It's the katnas. It's not you over, skip, skipping over the katnas. You're not saying there's no nida. But the only purpose of the nida, the purpose of the separation, is to create long, longing and stronger desire so there should be a higher level of yichud. Right? 
That's the intention. So you're building the vessels through katnas to get to a higher level of godless. You're building the, 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 the vessels of longing in order to get to a place where it's going to be deeper intimacy. That's why the Sphere of is that you're counting down to Matan Torah. You're saying, I'm, we're going to get this. We're not yet there, so I'm longing for it. And this is really the oymik, this is really the depth of what is the time of Sphere. The whole time period between Pesach and Shavuos is a time of katnas. It's a time of absence. It's the, when the, the nida, when the woman becomes unavailable. And that's Kaviyachal in our relationship with Hashem, when there's a hester, there's a katnas. The attention from the, from the katnas is to create the desire for the longing to create the higher godless. So all the things that happen, the death of Tomir Rebbe Kivo, or you say that it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a dinshal gehenim, or the gzeres tachvetat, and the gzeres of chamalansi, all these things that happen is not the siba. That's not the cause. That's the masuv. That's the, that's the effect. The cause is because now is a zman of katnas. The cause is because in the world there's a there's a cosmic katnas reality. Pesach were gifted, and I think this is actually even visceral. I don't even say on a spiritual metaphysical level. Spring comes and everyone is full of life. Everyone, even the people that are depressed, the, the sun is shining and the weather turns, everyone feels full of life. But what happens when you're in a month into spring already? Okay, so it's routine already. It's like it's back to the winter. So spring comes and there's, there's these chachas. But ear comes and there's a katnas again. So what's the kavan of the katnas? And this happens on a cosmic level, it happens on a literal level. level. The kavan of the katnas, the kavan of this din, of this restriction, is only that it create the greater longing of the godless which comes afterwards. So the, the point of the, of the absence is to create the longing. Now this also is connected to the man. Yes, the Gemara says, and who says this mimer? Rajvi. The Gemara, the Mishnah, the Gemara says that the Rajvi says, "Where's the lush over here?" Now, why did the man? Why did the man fall once a year? Why did it fall every single day? Why was the man there every single day? What did the Gemara say? The Gemara says... Ah. Shal tabidah sabashim b'yichai Neymar la yor lem yisol ma'am pa'amach v'shana Why was the man coming out every single day? What's the answer? That the intention of the man that falls every day and, and, and it stales every day is that every day we should long for it. So it, it leaves us, so it creates that we wanted that connection. Right? This concept, the same idea. There's an interesting marsha, the marsha moit kat chavches. says that the reason why Lag Boimer is celebrated is because it's a, it's a super majority. It's roiv. It's not roiv. Roiv usually is 51%, but it's a super majority. That it's roiv yamav. It's most of the days a sphere are over, and that's why we celebrate Lag Boimer. So yes, Shloimah, if you take this marsha to say like this, then what does it mean? Mashal Lama Adava would be like this. Similar to, let's say, a person is in love with somebody. A good friend, a spouse, a child, a parent, whatever, someone's really connected to somebody and the person's leaving for a week. One week. So they're leaving on Sunday, they come back Friday. Yeah. So the, the person leaves the airport on Sunday. Sunday, the person just left. Monday is still just also left. Uh, Wednesday and Thursday, they're already coming back. 
I come back the next day, I come back in the day after tomorrow. What happens on Tuesday? It's further the furthest point from them leaving and the furthest point from them coming back. That's when you miss them the most. Because they're coming back tomorrow, okay, they come back tomorrow. Okay, they come back after tomorrow. They just left. I just saw them. So where is the biggest point of longing? The biggest point of longing is Dafka, the peak of the separation. Now, the truth is that longing is actually Yichud. It's not only today the Chav Bishal Baila means that the person, the man, is in desire, and then eventually he's going to be with her, it's going to be a higher level of Yichud. The whole oymik of the longing is the Yichud. When you're with somebody, that's Yichud. But when you're not with somebody from a pneumistic from, from a deeper level, it's actually even a deeper yichud. Because that's what you're thinking about all the time. If you're with a person, you're with your friend, and you're, okay, so, okay, b- don't bother me now. But if you're, if you're longing for the person, that your whole, your whole consciousness is about the person, right? So the, the point of the period, the highest point of period, the highest point of separation, is actually the oymik of yichud. You follow? Correct? Now, and that's like Boimer. Like Boimer is a supermajority of Pirud. It's the high point, a little bit the opposite of what Masha is saying, but it's the same, same with the same logic. It's the high point of separation. Because it's the high point of separation, that brings out the deeper level of unity. So on one hand, it's the highest form of the Katnas, but the Katnas brings about the highest form of the Yichud. And that's why maybe Chazal, or the later Chachamim, intuited that this somehow is connected to Rashbi, and specifically to the death of Rashbi, Because Misa, death, is exactly the same thing. Physical death, I mean, everyone should know everyone that lives to live for 120, but when a person experiences physical death of a person that they love, the absence of the person because they don't see that person actually creates a deeper connection between, between the person and, and the person that passed away. Because the person is no longer physically here, so you don't take it for, for granted. So you actually think about them. And the longing and the desire to see them or, the, or to live with them or to think about them actually connects, 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 creates a deeper yichud. So Rajbi passing away, externally, reveals his deeper connection to the primus in this world. That's to say, a tzaddik at tzaddik that leaves this world is more present in this world because I think on a, on a very simple level it means because when the tzaddik's present, okay, he's a guy, okay, whatever, or he's a woman, whatever the person is. He's just the person. But when the person's no longer alive, that's when the legend is created. That's when actually the person's chiyos actually becomes more revealed in the world than when they're, when they're alive. This is, this is the way history works. Everyone after the Achmei Mos Kedoshim, but there's actually all the tzaddikim. You say, ah, oh, but this person, ah, oh, but the Baal Shem. Well, when the Baal Shem is alive, no one said that. Baal Shem is alive. There is one. When after he died, ah, oh, the Baal Shem. Understand? So the the period actually brings the higher level of Yichud, and that's what Lagba Oimer, the Gilu of Lagba Oimer is that Dafke be Makim a period, Dafke in the place of separation, Dafke in the place of of absence. That's when there's the Dafke, the the idea of God, of of Dafkin Golas is Gula. And that's why the, the Gimel Lamed is a Shoyesh of Golas and Gula. It's actually a, it's a, it's a Shoyesh that has both words. It can mean both exile and redemption. Because the biggest redemption is actually in the peak of the Golas. Not in the absence of the Golas. In the peak, in the depths of the Golas is the highest level of the Gula. And maybe this is, this is what this is the idea of the man when we talk about in Arizal he talks a lot of this idea of that the Lagboimer is about Betachen it's the Shema Betachen Shema Betachen is it's, it, I just want to say Az Nizgala Katnus Bevoi Yom Lagboimer Az Nizgala Katnus Be is a higher level of Katnus Shu Shem Achtetam I'll tell you what this means very quickly, and then to understand it. Shem Achatam is Aleph, Chaf, Dalet, Tes, Mem. It's the letters that come before the letters of Elohim. So you have Aleph, Lamed, Hey, Yud, Mem. 
Aleph is not Mischalaf. Aleph doesn't change because Aleph, you can't go before Aleph. And Mem is Mem. So Mem before the final one is Mem, so it's Mem. The three letters in the middle, which is Lamed, He, Yud, become Chaf, Dalet, Tes. So the shame, Ach, Betam, which the numeric value in total is 74, which is Betachem, the same word for Betachem. The three letters in the middle, Chaf, Dalet, Tes, in numeric value is also 33, which is Gal, Lag Boimer. Gal Eid, right, when Yaakov says Gal Eid, the, the Gal is going to be an Eid. So Gal Eid is Achtetam. It's those two letters. The A, Eid, is Bitcho Hashem Ade Ad. The Bitochen is Ade Ad. That's a 74. And the 33 is, the, is Lag Boimer. This is very little. This is, this is the shame of Bitochen. So the, according to the Kavanah Sari, According to the Ari, the whole point of Lag Boimer is Betachem. Now, what's Betachem? And I think this, this is why the Chassam Sofer ties it clearly to Taman, who says if the whole idea of Betachem is. But Betachem can mean a few things. One Betachem means, trust means things are not working out today. Yeah? It's not, it's not going good. I have Betachem that tomorrow it's going to be better. I have been talking that tomorrow something's going to work out. Right? That's one form of betachin. That's the betachin. That's the betachin of the normal day of man. That you have a man today. You finish it because you have betachin that tomorrow the man is going to come. Right? So you have been talking, even, okay, it's bad or good, but you have been talking that tomorrow something good is going to happen again. That's one form of betachem. But really, this form of betachem, this form of trust, is what the result of what this betachem is, the, res, the, the consequence of this betachem is that it eliminates the problem. Betachem means I, I hope something's going to happen, and then when it happens, so I. I worried. I, I'm worried that this is not going to happen, and then it happens. So it's the it's the geula that eliminates the golos. That's one form of betachem. But we just said that katnos. We're not trying to go. We're not trying to get from katnos into galos. We're trying to say that there's a kavana in the katnos itself. Not that we're trying. The go, the geula is the golos. Not not to say I'm I'm boiteach and tomorrow the the mashiach is around. Bahai Sefer the Loch Yigal Vegalus of Barachim means that the oimik of the, of the, of the Zoya, the oimik of Torah of Anister, of Pnimius, is the, is the hippoch of what you think. You think it's one, it's actually the other. But if you think it's one, it's actually the other, the, the, the betachen would mean, on the level of the high level of betachen, is in the katnus, it, that's it. You understand? The, the gula is in the katnas itself. Not that it's I'm going to have food. Something something like this. And maybe this is why we asked the, the, the question was, it wasn't well, much a question, but it was a klotz kasha, of why Lecha Mishnah, why Lecha Mishnah do you do on Shabbos? You should really do it on, on, on Friday. Because the Friday level of Betach on Friday is like every day of, of that Hashem will provide tomorrow. Something will be good for, for tomorrow. Shabbos morning, it's a different type of betachem. It's not the betachem that tomorrow is going to be, Hashem will be food to provide. It's betachem is that whatever I have now, that's exactly what it's supposed to be. Because it's not going to bring new man. And I don't know what's going to... And I'm not talking about tomorrow. I'm talking about today. Today no man is coming. But whatever this little oimer that I have, this is what Hashem wants. This is the gula. The gula is in this piece of man. This is my betachan. I have trust that this is what I, exactly what I have to have. Not that I have to have something better. Not that tomorrow something's gonna, a new day, something new is going to come. But whatever I have, that's what I have. And that's good. This type of betachan is, in another way of saying it, it's, it's a... You're breathing in 
a hischachos, a, 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 a renewal koyach, a, a, a chias, into the mundane, into the routine, into the, the, the dry, into the old. You're following? So this is like, this is actually the lechem upon him. The lechem upon him, Chazal say, was always fresh, but it was yashon. It's not that it, it became no longer old. It was old and fresh together. It was taka yashon. They baked it a week ago. But even though they baked it a week ago, it was still the ishachos. And that's the oimik of the second day of, of the Shabbos man. The Shabbos man had the same ishachos of, of the yashon. It was ready yashon. It was ready yesterday's bread. It was ready yesterday's man, but it's still, it's still mishadash. So this, the, this, the, the geula is in the yashon. The, the ishachos is in the old. And this is the oimik of the of the of the of Lag Boimer. Of the schachos of the of the bitachin of the of the midah of the geula in the golas. And that's 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 why it's a mystery. All these things that happen in the sphere are all mesuvad. These are all the things that happen from the root cause. The root cause is this katnas. And katnas comes out in a lot of different hardships. It could be pogroms, blood libels, whatever comes out. The death of Rabbi Kiva, the Cholensky revolt, it could be Bar Kocha revolt. There's a lot of things that happen connected to this period of time. Because it's the time of katnas. And, and, and how do we celebrate it? Because someone died. But that's the whole reason why you're mourning. Mourn, you usually mourn when someone passes away. And the whole thing of, more, of, 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 of the sphere is because of death. And now you're celebrating Dafka death. But that's the Varv. That's the Varv. That's because that's the Pneumius. The Pneumius is in the natural, in the, in the regular, in the, in the order, in the mundane, and the Ischachis of Yeshana. This is what I wanted to say. Columbus.